All right, to start, create an eye out of a basic sphere. You're going to texture it very simply by going to face mode, selecting the very front of the eye, and then what you can do is right click, assign new material, select a blend so that it has a basic shininess to it, and make that black. Go to select, inverse, add another blend by going to assign new material, blend, and make that white. From there, you can go back to object mode and then do a control D or duplicate on the eye. And you should have two eyes. Now we want to set up a controller system so that these have something to look at. And you can do that by going to curves. Select a circle and remember, make sure under create nerd primitives, you have interactive creation on. Keep setting up. And then Go ahead, select a light, a circle, highlight one of the eyes, getting about to the size. It can be a little bigger if you'd like, but you don't want it to be too huge. And then you can do another control D, duplicate and put it around the other eye. Now to make a controller everything is going to be linked to, you can go to your Bezier line right here and just click, drag a circle out so that you have a circle around it and click down. And some of these are a lot more complicated. You'll see some people that do things that look like spectacles or outlines of eyes, and you can get as complicated as this as you want. But for right now, since this is just a simple demo, we're going to keep it simple. To close off the shape, remember you can go to Curve, Open Close, and then we're going to select this circle actually, first, so that nothing remembers it's associated with each other, we're going to go to Edit, Delete All by Type History, and Edit, Delete All by Type Non-Deformer History. This is especially important when you've done a lot of Control Ds, Duplicates, and from there we can select the circle, Shift-click the other circle, Let's see if I can aim, circle, Shift-click other circle, and then shift click this outline and hit P. This should do is parent the eye so that when you move it, everything moves together. And now you've set up the controller. The last step is to set up the actual aim constraint. So you're going to select the circle, select the eye, and under the animation menu, go to constraint, aim, and select options. We want to maintain offset so that the eye won't rotate or move around. And instead of our world up, this would matter if we had a complicated rig set up, but since you're doing just the eyes controlled by this controller, you can go ahead and hit none, then hit add. Now, when you move the controller, it should follow it. To go ahead and select the second, you'll go circle, Shift select the eye. Once again, go to that constraint, aim constraint, maintain offset, add, and then once again, you should be able to move the eyes either independently or select the parent and do that. Now, if you scaled these eyes up, you actually wouldn't destroy the constraint. But what would happen is that they'll still move side to side very nicely. They're still rotating around that pivot. But if you move it up and down, it'll rotate on that arc. There are some other constraints you can do for that, but no, if you want an eye that's not completely a sphere, you will have to make some modifications in your character or do some custom animation if you want them to look up and down. That's why a lot of cartoons you see will go ahead and squish that down or just do the pupil over the character instead of an entire eye. But there you go, that's aim constraint.